Hey, what's up guys? I'm back with another Learn Electronics for Beginners video. So the next few videos in this Learn Electronics series, I'm gonna be going over some basic math skills needed for electronics. It was difficult to decide what to cover in these videos since I have no idea where you're at with math. Maybe you were pretty good at math in high school, but that was 10 years ago, or maybe you were just never very good at math at all. With this in mind, I'll be making some recommendations for other resources in the next video if what I'm covering seems a bit too much for you. I want to stress though that most of the math skills needed to work with electronics are pretty basic, and I'll do the best that I can to explain stuff along the way. What I'll be covering in these next few videos will by no means be all inclusive, but it'll get you going. So let's do this. We're gonna start with basic operations with powers. If you watched my previous videos about scientific and engineering notation, then you should already be at least a little bit familiar with them. In those videos, I opted not to talk about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with powers. I've had a change of heart though. I'm gonna discuss it briefly and mostly for the purpose of getting familiar with using a calculator for these operations. Yeah, you're gonna need a scientific calculator. I mean, you could try to go without one if you're a crazy person and you want to use a slide scale. It's how the old timers did it, the guys who invented calculators. Someday, maybe we'll build a calculator for fun. Okay, let's dive right into it. We're gonna work through a few problems. We'll start with multiplication. So you may or may not know, but an easy grade school trick to simplify a problem like this is to just add out the zeros. We just take off all the zeros, set them aside, and focus on the other numbers. Then we add back all the zeros to our end product like so. Let's look at it in exponential notation now. This trick might make a little more sense. So our rule for multiplying in exponential notation is to multiply our base numbers first and then add our powers. Note that the exponential notation I'm using differs from scientific and engineering notation because I'm choosing to work with whole numbers and no decimal. This example is technically proper engineering notation. Exponential notation has no convention though. We can write it how we want. Whatever works for us. You could even leave on extra zeros if you wanted, but there's no reason to do so. Keep in mind, the whole reason we're going over this is to practice working with exponents on our calculator, which we'll get to. Don't stress too much if you're not following everything so far. So working through this problem in exponential notation, we multiply our whole numbers first, like so, and then add our powers. To add our powers, we just add the exponents. Easy. Note that this is exactly what we did when we just carried over our zeros. We just added all our zeros together and tacked them on to our end product. Piece of cake. All right, enough nonsense. Let's use our calculator now. That's the whole point. So you can use whatever scientific calculator you want. You can even use your computer if it, you happen to be watching this on a computer. However, I'm a little biased. I love my Texas Instruments TI-30X2S. I've used a few calculators in my day, but this one is my favorite. I'll put a link in the description for you. If you're using a different calculator, you may have to read up on how to do the various functions we'll be using along the way. Okay, first I wanna point out that whatever calculator we're using, our display is limited. The screen can only fit a certain number of digits on it. The numbers we're working with are fairly big, so on some calculators, they might not fit unless we convert them to some form of exponential notation first. My calculator, the TI-30X, can fit up to, I think, 99 digits in the operation side on the top. It scrolls the digits over beyond the display, but it can only fit 10 digits in the answer, so it converts it automatically to scientific notation. On your calculator, you may need to actually enter the numbers in exponential notation to multiply them. I'll show you it both ways. Let's take a look. So first, I'll just enter the numbers as they appear. Notice my calculator automatically converts my answer to scientific notation due to the limited display. I have a button on my calculator I can use if I want to display it in engineering notation as well. So if your calculator can't do this and we need to enter the numbers in exponential notation, the button we're interested in is the EE button. Other calculators might call it EXP or EEX. This is just a short way of entering times 10 to the power of. And then we enter our exponent. So let's do our calculation using the EE button on our calculator. I love calculators, they make life better. They make me happy. You notice it shows our answer in scientific notation, which looks different than the answer we got by hand, but we'll just convert that to scientific notation and see that it's the same answer. 
All right, so that was multiplication. Let's move along into division. Similar to before, when we divide, we can just cancel out our zeros and work with what's left. It makes it a little easier. There's an important thing to realize when we do this in exponential notation. So let's look at this in exponential notation. So like before, we deal with the base numbers first and then deal with the exponents of the powers of 10. Instead of adding the exponents, we're actually subtracting now, but let's not think in terms of subtracting. Let's think in terms of adding a negative number. This helps us keep straight what is subtracted from what. The powers need to both be in the numerator to accomplish this. I kind of mentioned this in a past video, but to move the power from the denominator into the numerator, all we need to do is change a sign of the exponent. Once we've moved the power into the numerator, we can proceed as normal and add the exponents. One of them will be negative now. All right, that was kind of complicated. Let's do it on a calculator now. We like calculators. It's not very different from before. We're just using the division symbol instead of the multiplication symbol. Easy. You'll notice it actually shows our answer in normal decimal notation now. This is because our answer will actually fit. It doesn't need to be in exponential notation. We don't have to worry about the exponents or changing signs or anything either. Yay, calculators. Again, we're doing this to get used to things on the calculator. Hopefully by looking at the longhand examples, you'll have a better idea of why things work the way they do as well. Knowing how to move numbers with an exponent into the numerator or denominator by changing the sign of the exponent is a good thing to remember. It's an important part of being able to manipulate equations, which we'll get into later. All right, let's take a look at adding and subtracting now. When adding these numbers, instead of adding or subtracting zeros like before, we just carry them through until where the other digits start in our numbers. Remember zero plus zero or zero minus zero always equals zero. Now, in previous videos, we talked about moving the decimal point to the left and to the right and how it corresponds to the exponents of our powers of 10. You might remember when we add or subtract decimal numbers, we have to line up the decimal points. When we add or subtract in exponential notation, we're following the same rules. We have to line up our decimals. And what this means in exponential notation is that our exponents have to be the same. Once we have our exponents the same, we proceed as we normally would. In this case, making sure our decimals are lined up. Of course, if we don't want to worry about the decimal, we could just move the decimal over one less time since we're working exponential notation and there is no convention dictating where our decimal needs to be. In this case, we would have 10 to the fifth power instead of 10 to the sixth. Our exponents are still the same, so we're good to go. Okay, subtracting is no different. Again, we just need to make sure our exponents are the same. Here's a quick combined example. Now let's run through doing it on the calculator. We love calculators. We'll just do the same problems we just looked at. Easy. Calculators make life nice. We don't even have to worry about lining up the decimals when using our calculator. It handles that for us. We don't even need to make sure our exponents are the same. Okay guys, again, all this was really about getting familiar with using our calculator. And I hope doing this stuff by hand helped you understand things a little better. If you don't have a calculator, if nothing else, this video should have shown you why you should get one. Seriously, go get one. We're going to be getting into trigonometry soon, so you need one. I promised at the beginning of this video I'd give a couple recommendations in the next video if you are feeling a little overwhelmed by this stuff. I don't want you to be intimidated by math. Honestly, I work with electricity every day and I rarely use math. Granted, I'm fixing things and not designing things mostly, but you can go a long way with electronics on very little math skills. However, to really truly understand electricity, we have to have some math skills. So guys, be sure to check out the next video if you struggled a little bit here. Well, check it out either way. It will be life changing. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you got value out of this video, be sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and best yet, share it with a friend. Tell me in the comments below what your preferred calculator is. This is Life Meet Lightning, bringing a little lightning into your life.